Well, hello, everyone. Today, I am here with a dear friend of mine, Cheryl Victor. I also know her as Lyric. And we're going to be talking about autism. And we are here on our platform, our Dream Life platform, where I do believe that you can achieve and receive an extraordinary life of passion and purpose. Today, I'm wearing my sash as I am the delegate for Nevada for the Classic Universe Woman uh, pageant that will be held in July 2023. And on this platform, I'm looking at bringing awareness to things that are happening in our community that we do not really know about. And autism is something that I know I wasn't very familiar with. So I've reached out to someone who can tell us all about it and bring awareness to it so that we can get it out into the community and get people the resources that they need, the help that they need so that they can live a thriving, wonderful life of passion and purpose, more like what I would call your dream life. Cheryl, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me, Marquis, and congratulations on your title. Well, thank you. Thank you. And congratulations. You have a nonprofit called CARS, that's Communication Autism Resources, that helps our community, yes? Yes, that is correct. Communication Autism Resources was founded actually during the pandemic, and I actually personally struggled with the situation. So the purpose of Communication Autism Resources is to help those that have developmental disabilities that may struggle to communicate. And we provide a form of communication through assistive technology via use of iPads or communication applications. And this gives them the power to communicate. It's a beautiful thing. Wow. Okay. So you hit on a whole bunch right there. And I want to start at the very beginning so we can unpack this because as I said, I wasn't very familiar with autism. So exactly what is autism? Autism is actually a developmental delay and it's caused by differences in the brain. So it's a neurological thing. Wow. Okay. And we've talked about communication, communication here, and we talked about behavioral disabilities. So how do those two things come together with autism? Actually, there's a few things that are deficits for those um, autism. Communication is one of them. Social mm -hmm. interaction is the other one. And the third one is just that develop, developmental delay. You know, it could be academics, communication, social, just how to, to deal in everyday world, just like you said earlier, like those that are called typical do. So they really struggle with that. Right. I mean, would we actually be able to identify just visually a person with autism if we were, let's say, at the mall or at a grocery store? It depends, you know, if you met one person with autism, you've met one person with autism. Um, there is a spectrum of autism. Mm -hmm. So you could be severe or it could be not so severe, right? So it depends on where you lie on the spectrum. So you may see one person and not know at all. And then you could see another individual and you can see some of those things like maybe walking on their toes or mm -hmm. flapping or stimming, or it's, a lot of times they have sensory issues. So you might find them holding their ears. So it really just depends on the individual, but there are definitely signs that you know an early intervention to let you know that maybe if you wanna get your child diagnosed. Wow, okay. So in some cases you recognize it, in other cases you don't recognize it, but there are telltale signs. Let's go to some of our questions here. And um, who is affected by autism? Well, autism does not discriminate, that's for sure. So it definitely crosses all lines. It crosses racial lines, socioeconomic, ethnic lines. So I work with this all day long and it def definitely hits everyone in all of our community. So it's very important that everyone knows about this because there's no discrimination. It can hit you whether you're rich or poor, no matter what your race is. So be aware of what, what the signs are so you can get help right away. Wow, what about gender, male well, to female or? Actually male to female, it's really interesting because it tends to be more prevalent in our boys. So our males, they tend to get it more than our females. The females are not excluded, but according to data from the CDC, definitely it's our boys that get it more frequently than our girls. Wow, See, and sometimes like, that's why this awareness for me is very important. I would have thought, just FYI here for me, like sickle cell targets a race. 
You know, there are different diseases and disabilities that are out there that do target specific backgrounds and cultures. But you're saying this one, everybody, nobody is indemnified. Absolutely. It crosses all lines for sure. Okay. So now in detecting autism, is there a better time to see it, learn it, identify it? You definitely find it during those developmental years um, because there are milestones with any parent. You know, you're raising your child and you see that chart of milestones. When should they be speaking? When should they be walking? You know, those type of normal milestones that all our parents look forward to. And so a lot of times you'll find those deficits during those times, like between the ages of two and three, when you're seeing mm-hmm. those other typicals developing and you're thinking, well, wait a minute, mine possibly could be missing something here. And that's a lot of times when you start to see those telltale signs, or you might want to start looking into just going to your local school district or your local neurologist to see if there's something going on there. It's, it's interesting that you say that because, you know, we're living in this world of technology. And for the most times, this is what we see with our people. That's right. <laughs> And when that is happening, we're not paying attention so much to our children and their process of developmenting, to developing, excuse me. So with children, this is the time that you want to check them out more in their developmental stage. Like you said, ages two, ages three, when they should be talking, when they should start actually formulating words, et cetera, et cetera. We have a tendency in our society right now we're stuck on iPads. They're not talking. Children are waiting longer. Is this something that is affecting them or is bringing autism more to the forefront? I mean, well, I'm going to flip that and say the great thing about technology is that we can easily look up stuff like what are the developmental stages where before either you would pair it with another, you know, compare it to maybe your friend's child or, but there's actually timelines now, right? So we can Mm -hmm. look that up and do your research as parents, you know, when you're having a baby, do that research and know those milestones. So you'll know right away um, exactly when that's happening. I definitely think the technology has probably affected all children. If you think about the pandemic, when kids were all forced to stay at home, all of our children, yeah. even typical ones, we're missing out on that social, right? They're missing yes. out on that social interaction. So you can only imagine someone with autism, diagnosed with autism, who already has the deficit of the social interaction. And then also on top of that, being stuck inside during COVID, getting zero social interaction. So I think it affected all of us, you know, just looking at the iPads, the technology, and not getting that social, but especially our children with autism, I think they were also affected as well. Yes, yes, very good point there. Very good point there. Um, I just, I know that I often, because of coming from a background in dance and, and children in activity, because of technology, they're not doing as much activity. And so you don't get to see that. So it's like that, where do we find that balance, you know? And that's super helpful. Like, you're right. If they do have this deficit, the technology is definitely a way to help them. So absolutely. What are the numbers looking like for us um, with autism? It's not going anywhere. It seems like every year I look the numbers, they're getting astounding. Right now, according to the Center of Disease Control and Protection, prevention, the CDC, one out of 44 children are being diagnosed with autism at this time. That's a lot. Those numbers are alarming. That is a lot. I mean, we are talking about the people in society that will be going forward as, you know, because we always say we pass it down to the children because they're coming up behind us. They're going to be taking the forefront as we, you know, we age out, so to speak, you know, oh no, (laughs) we need to do something about this. This is more reason of why this is fabulous, what you're doing, bringing this to the forefront and educating, because usually people don't know about this type of thing unless it touches them individually. But as a community, we do need to be aware of our surroundings and our society and know who we could possibly help or, you know, just have that knowledge. And so you bringing this to the forefront, this awareness is so important because as we just said, those numbers are getting larger, right? So there are going to be more people, more people that have this, right? Yeah. Right, right. So now what, what are the deficits, uh, Cheryl? 
definitely the deficits, you know, that persistent difficulties and that social communication. We have some students, I will dig a little deep about the, so the communication portion of it. Some of our kids are actually nonverbal. The only way they can get something is by grabbing your hand and leading you over to it or them independently walking over and getting those items. They literally do not have the ability to communicate. Some of our kids, they have, they communicate, but it's limited speech. You know, some of them, mm -hmm. they have what we call rote or re repetitive, repetitive behaviors. And that's the other third thing that's so super important, those behaviors, the social, the communication and behavioral, it becomes such they're, they get to get the frustration because of the communication. Imagine if you right. couldn't communicate, right? That would be right. very frustrating to you. So because of that, that causes the behavior as well. So there are so many portions of this, but definitely the communication, the behavioral and the um, social interaction with people. So some people get fooled. They'll say, oh, well, the person, they say words, but if they're not functionally communicating, if they can't say, hey, can I have some juice? Then that's not functional. Right. Yeah, we have to know right. that difference as well. Yeah. I mean, that it, it truly can, for the person with autism, be so stifling and cha challenging beyond what we would say challenging because they're left out. They're left out. They, they get, wow. And Marquis, it's not just only challenging for the individual with autism, but it's challenging mm -hmm. for the families as well. I think raising mm -hmm. children is challenging already. And then you get yes. one that, you know, usually you have a typical child, you can ask a relative or a friend, like, what does that look like? Right. But in this case, sure. you may not know another parent that has a child with autism. So That's right. you struggle to wonder what does that look like? So it, it definitely affects the entire family. So whatever we can do to help support that, that's what we'd like to do. And yes, and much to why awareness, 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 so important that we don't just push them to the side, that we don't just think they're acting out, that we don't just categorize them as the bad seed or the bad child. No, to get them diagnosed so that the help can be given and the resources can be brought to the front to help them. I also want to look at the parents who do, do have to deal with this because I know it can be frustrating and it takes super patience of which I knew, I always said I have the patience of my fingernails and at the time they were nil. And so, you know, I, I cannot even imagine how they feel when they don't know what to do for their child. Can you speak a little bit to that? Because I know sometimes it's fear, sometimes it's frustration, and sometimes it's just simply not knowing. You know, you're absolutely correct, Marquis. It's a little of all of that. I think at first it's, you know, them just realizing there's an issue, right? And then knowing who to go to, who do I speak with? Um, what do I do for my child next? You know, those are all the questions that parents have. You know, will my child be successful? Will they have this forever? You know, what can I do to make sure they have the best quality of life? Um, if my first advice to any family that may even possibly think of the signs that they may see something is the first and best thing you can do is to go get a diagnosis. And you kind of briefly touched upon that earlier, but it is so important to get a diagnosis. If you do not have a diagnosis, you cannot get services therefore resulting in not getting any assistance, resulting in, again, having a child or growing this adult, raising this person that will not have any resources to support them throughout their lives. So definitely get do the first thing, get those, um, those diagnoses, and also know that early intervention is key. You must start early. You know, don't think, oh, this is going to go away. I'm not going to do anything because a lot of times we go, oh, they'll grow out of it don't have that mindset. Definitely, I'd rather you be proactive and say, oh, it's nothing later after you find out it's nothing, but go find out first, see if there's something there. And then immediately after that, find out what the resources are and start that early intervention. And you will be amazed at the progress and how much help that is. Wow. You touched on something that I want to kind of dig a little bit deeper into because my brother had asthma and it was one of those things where, oh, he'll grow out of it. And then my son had what they called running asthma. I don't know why they diagnosed it or called it that, 
But again, something he'll grow out of. Is autism something you will grow out of? I'm not a doctor, so let me say that first. But based off of what I've seen in the experiences, it's definitely not something that you grow out of. Um, it's something that you can get therapies to kind of eliminate some of those behaviors or learn how to um, work around the communication deficits with different resources like technology. Um, but it's something that you're definitely always wanting to use the same strategies with that person because it's a neuro it's a it's a developmental and it's neuro neurolo neurological. So this okay. is something that will always be there. But you definitely have those resources though to help them get through life and be successful. It but only if you have these resources and you use the different therapies available. Yes. Yes. One of the things I want to make sure the audience and those who are watching this and have an opportunity to see it and those people we share it with have the understanding of, if you do not get the diagnosis, you cannot get the help that's out there for you. There's not a reason for you not to get that diagnosis or for you to seek out these answers for whoever it is that may be struggling with these disabilities, this disorder and the disorders, because the resources are available with the diagnoses. So, I mean, I know a lot of times people don't want to claim things and, you know, we want to just shove it to the back, not think about it. It'll go away. Do not do that. We're looking at children that are going to be our future. And we need to make sure they have a way to communicate in the world successfully, not just for other people, but for themselves, so that they can have a thriving life of and productive life, you know, one for them. Cheryl, thank you so much for bringing these things out. Let's hit a few more things that, you know, could really help with tools. What are some of the tools that we have or resources that are out there? Well, I won't say all states because I haven't been to all of them, but I would assume most or all states have at least a state level. Um, we have the Desert Regional Center here in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. So that's our right. state level center, right, that you go to. Definitely go there with your diagnosis, of course. So that would be after the diagnosis, right? Because without the right. diagnosis, like you just said earlier, you cannot get services. And without services, there's no success. So after getting that diagnosis, go to somewhere like your regional center, sign up for that. It is taxing. You have to fill out a lot of paperwork. There's a lot of waiting lists, but that's a, you know, that's a part of being a strong parent. And you just have to really advocate for your child and make sure those things happen. Once you get that, there are other services such as ABA, which is Applied Behavioral Analysis. That's to assist with the behavioral portions of things. There's something like what my nonprofit and for-profit does. There's assistive technology, which we focus on the communication aspect of things. We provide technology iPads, for example, with communication applications and model mm -hmm. that with the students that will allow them the ability to communicate their wants and needs on a daily basis. So you have those type of services, speech therapy, hypotherapy, occupational therapy, all of those therapies are available to you. And the great thing about now that wasn't before, the insurances actually cover all of, all of this stuff now, yes. where years ago, insurance did not cover ABA at all. So it's great that all, all of these services are totally being covered by insurances. I'm not saying it's an easy journey, but it's definitely something that can be done. Absolutely, absolutely. You must continue to persevere. And when we take on the role of a parent, that is part of our job. Right. <laughs> I, I mean, so many times this stuff gets swept under the rug for, because people just either don't have the patience to deal with it, don't know. A lot of times they just don't know where to go, you know. So it is very, very advantageous for you to seek out in your community. And if you're here in Las Vegas, Nevada, reach out to Cheryl Victor her communication autism resource, as well as victory autism resources so that she can help you and get you some assistance, work with you, consult with you, answer some of the questions that you may be having. Um, I want to jump back just for a second, because, you know, when children are rambunctious and they've got all this energy and running all over the place and we started prescribing them Ritalin and, and saying they had ADHD, if that's happening, I'm 
I'm not going to say that that's not the problem with your child. Obviously, we're not doctors. We're just talking about this. But if that is happening, you may want to get the child checked out. It may be a, an, uh, on the autism spectrum. And then you would have resources to help you out rather than just America, we have to stop trying to take a pill for everything. I know that's pretty broad and I'm throwing it out there, but it's true, you know, and children should have a, a level of energy that we as adults have kind of slowed down from. That's why we look towards them. You know, we want them to go get the remote because I don't feel like walking over there again. <laughs> You know, that's what's great about a lot of the services here, because I, you know, you have some that you're right, you can go to a neurologist and get a prescription, right? But then you also have right. all of these homeopathic options, like the ABA I was speaking of earlier, or the hippotherapy where they can ride horses, right, for their OT and PT. Yes. It's our swimming like there's so there's so many great even music therapy so many different therapies out there that's why parents you know instead of looking down at the situation do your homework get excited and choose which programs are going to be best for your child and your family and if you need assistance with that then victor autism resources or communication autism resources will be more than happy to assist oh i love that i love that a lot of it is cheryl that they've just left music in schools and stopped taking all these extra programs out, you know, some of that stuff would be built in. But since they didn't, this is the route we have to go. What are the resources that are available here in Las Vegas? Um, I know we have your resource. Is there something else that you would advocate for? Yeah, absolutely. There is a nonprofit here that's been around since the 90s, and they're one of the larger nonprofits that deal with that community of children diagnosed with autism, and they deal from birth up until adulthood, which is wonderful. Um, the name of that organization is called Feet of Southern Nevada, and that stands for Families Effective Autism Treatment, and so that's a great go-to place. For the social, there's a place called Sports Social. They help kids, they put them in groups, they teach them how to socialize appropriately and how to generalize that skill, how to ride a bike, how to skateboard. So super fun. Yes. So there's just so, it's, it's just getting so fun out here. Our community is growing with resources. 20 years ago, not so many, but those are a couple that I could definitely advocate for, but there are so many out there. Just really Google. I don't love one more than the other. I think it's great that we're all out here you know, finding our niche and just kind of doing what we can to help that community. Because as we said earlier, it is growing, right? Yes, yes. And I just want to double down on that, that you are available to assist with families. Yes, I am. Um, through Victor Autism Resources, you can go to our website, of course, which is varlv.com. And you can fill out the questionnaire and we'll be more than happy to um, get back with you. And if you find that you're in a struggle, so don't feel like, oh, I can't afford this. That is where the nonprofit comes in. We want to help supplement those, the income of those that may think they can't afford it. And that may be some of the issue for people not getting help as well. So do not let that deter you from calling up, at least getting some information. We all like those cell phones, we're always on it. So don't hesitate to give us a shout out. You can reach us via email or also by phone call as well. Yes, I'm so glad that you came on. I think earlier, you might have hit on this, but I'm going to ask anyway, what is your personal connection with autism? Yeah, I did briefly say that I was affected by it, but I didn't say in what way. I personally have a 21 year old, actually he'll be 21 soon, diagnosed with autism. He was diagnosed at the age of three. He had severe behaviors, slapping, running, eloping, um, so many different behaviors. He also had the communication issue. He was one of those that had words, but it wasn't functional. So he would sing you an entire song, but he wouldn't say, I want juice. So we had to the functional communication that I spoke about earlier. He had that deficit. And socially, he didn't know how to stand next to another kid and make friends and said, do you want, do you want to play? So all of those three deficits, I did have to experience as a parent and watch him grow through that. He still is dealing with it today. However, the joy is he has a job. He's working with computers. Um, you don't have to talk a lot to work with computers. So just because someone's not verbal doesn't mean they're not smart. So we have to give right. these students the opportunity so they can show us what they can do. And without the resources, yes. without the communication applications and the village, there's an old Nigerian proverb. It takes a village to raise a child. 
truly with this group, it takes a village to raise a child. So make sure you surround yourself with your village when you're going through this journey, because it is so important. And now I stand proud as a mother of a child with autism, proud to say that I'm very happy. He graduated with a 3.86 grade average in gen ed, but still in special ed, getting those resources. So you're wanting, you're wanting to get that diagnosis at the beginning because without that diagnosis, he would have never had the supports that he needed to be successful. We were using the in-school resources and then also those outsort resources like Feed Sports Social, DRC, all of those resources as well. So we're still working on things, Voc Rehab. So guys, I've been through the, from birth to adulthood. So any questions, I can definitely answer, but I'm very proud. And that there's definitely success at the end of the tunnel. There really is. Yes, that is so exciting and so wonderful. Congratulations. I remember when your son graduated and as dapper and handsome as he is with his cap and gown, how beautiful. And this brings me to my understanding with what you just said. He would sing you an entire song, but he couldn't say, I want some juice. Well, that's because his mother is a beautiful singer and songwriter and musician. So I know that he gets his talents from you and we will be looking to see you out there performing with in Las Vegas, because I know you do. And uh, you've also been doing the national anthem, right? I have, I performed the national anthem. My, my first time was for the Florida Marlins, but most recently now in my home city of Las Vegas for the Las Vegas Aviators. So I look forward to continue to do that as well. And I know they're partnering with you on the nonprofit. Is that correct? Yeah. So we have a night at the ballpark where small percent of the proceeds will go to communication autism resources. So we can provide that power for students to communicate. That's what we want. We want to give all children the power to communicate. And so come on out and support um, communication autism resources at the ballpark on Amazon Smile, wherever you can support. We really would appreciate it. Yes, I think that is fabulous. I'm so glad that that was a connection for you in the community. And I want to thank you so much for your time and your knowledge with autism, the sensitivity of it, the understanding and having a resource for our community and for people out there that need help. So Cheryl, thank you so much. I appreciate your time today. Um, again, I'm Marquis, your Classic Universe Woman 2023 right here, the delegate in Nevada. And always I say, if you believe you can achieve and receive an extraordinary life of passion and purpose, and part of our purpose is to bring awareness to the community so that we can help them and give them resources that they need to live a thriving and successful life. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you, you for so that. much.